So we previously talked about a queue, which is a first in first out type of data structure that allows you to consume the data elements and use them. Well, that works in a lot of cases, both in real life as well as in a computer. However, sometimes we run into a special situation where that's not going to work, where we need to essentially allow a element to skip to the head of the line or maybe further ahead. In that case, we'll use something called a priority queue. And a priority queue is designed to allow certain elements to move further ahead if it's necessary. So let's first look at a priority queue in a real life environment. Let's say you need to go to a doctor for your regular well visit. You schedule an appointment, you show up at the doctor's office, and right before a doctor is going to call you back to see you, someone comes in and they're having a medical emergency. The doctor isn't going to tell them that they need to wait because they don't have an appointment. They need to be seen right away because they're having a medical emergency. Therefore, they're going to get skipped and go to the head of the line. They have the priority because it's a medical emergency. And that's the same basic idea of a priority queue. It allows certain elements in their data structure to be moved ahead of other ones. We can see this in computers too. For example, my scheduling application, which tells what process needs to run next for my CPU, might see that there's a real-time process, something that has to occur within a given time frame. And because that is a real-time process, it is given a higher priority, and it is moved up the list of the list of items that need to be worked on by my processor. Likewise, I might have different users, and different users get a different priority level based upon who they are, what their job is. For example, a place I used to work, the CEO always got top priority whenever he had a troubleshooting ticket come into the help desk. It didn't matter the fact that he used the computer the least of a lot of the people in the organization. Because he was the CEO, his stuff got fixed first. We can see priority queues being used in a lot of different places, not just because you're a CEO or you're a real-time application, but because it has some useful merits. Now, the basic structure and functionality of a priority queue is almost identical to a regular queue. So the difference between a priority queue and a regular queue is that there's going to be an associated priority associated with your data element. So for example, your help desk ticket, if you have something that's only affecting a single person is not going to be real high. However, if you have a department-wide outage, for example, a file server isn't allowing the accounting department to do any work, that's going to take a much higher priority and it's going to be worked on first. When you look at the in-queue method of a priority queue, it will look at the priority and compare it to the last item on the list. If the new item's priority is higher, it will be moved ahead of it. This process will continue until the new item is either at the front of the list or it finds someone who has an even higher priority and it stops there. And that's your big difference. Everything else is going to stay the same when you're using a priority queue. Has the same basic structure of a first in, first out, but just with a little twist.